Now, during the uh, Daily News hatchet job, uh, Bernie Sanders was asked about corporate greed and was asked to give an example. He was he, the example that he had given was GE. Now, let me uh, read to you from that. Uh, General Electric, good example. General Electric was created in this country by American workers and American consumers. What we have seen over the many years is shutting down of many major plants in this country, sending jobs to low-wage countries, and General Electric doing a very good job avoiding the taxes. In fact, in a given year, they pay nothing in taxes. That's greed. That is greed and that selfishness. That is lack of respect for the people of this country. Now, uh, CEO uh, Jeff Immelt was not happy about being called out by Bernie Sanders, so he decided to write an op-ed in the very Clinton-friendly Washington Post that said this. Starts out, GE has been in business for 124 years, and we've never been a big hit with socialists. Nice little stab there. Uh, we create wealth and jobs instead of just calling for them in speeches. So the obvious question is wealth for who? The shareholders? Uh, you? Well, we'll get to that. Uh, he continues, we'll take, we take risks, invest, innovate, and produce in ways that today sustain 125,000 U.S. jobs out of a country of 300 million. Uh, our engineers innovate every day to build hardware and software solutions that meet real-world challenges. Our employees are proud of our company. I meet second and third generation employees whenever I travel across the country. I am one myself. Our suppliers and partners are proud of our company. Our communities are proud of our company. Our pride, history, and hard work are real. The moral fabric of America. First off, uh, Sanders, he's not going after the workers. He's going after the fact that the company, that GE as a corporation, has paid no taxes and has been offshoring jobs. How many workers, how many Americans would actually be proud or more proud to work at GE if they reshored some of those jobs they sent overseas and paid their taxes? If their company was a good, outstanding moral citizen. I mean, there was a corporate culture that used to value the country. We don't have that anymore. They don't have that anymore because they're multinational corporations that don't have any allegiance to any country. Their only allegiance is to their profit margins, which is unfortunate. Now, the article continues. Sanders says that he is upset about GE's operations abroad, as though a company that has customers in more than 180 countries should have no presence in any of them. He never mentions that we are one of the United States' prime exporters, annually selling in excess of $20 billion worth of American-made goods to the world. Nor does he mention that our sales around the world support our manufacturing base here at home along with the thousands of U.S. companies in our supply chain. You want to cause big problems for our suppliers, many of whom are small and medium-sized businesses and their workers? The surest way would be to pull out of those countries and lose those customers. Oh. Okay, so what he's doing is trying to say that Sanders wants to pull all operations for all companies out of other countries. No, that's not what he's saying. That's not even his argument. It's not about building more overseas, right? It's about what GE has done is that taking its own factories, shutting them down here and reopening them overseas, which they've done. According to a CNN money analysis of GE's regulatory uh, filings, at the end of 2015, just 38% of GE's employees were in the U.S., that's down from 68% in 1995. GE also has 10 fewer U.S. plants today than a decade ago, while it has increased its oversize, or overseas plants by 58. You're shutting down factories here, opening them up overseas. In places where 
like China, like Vietnam. The company takes these jobs that were here and gets rid of them. Now he say, Immel says that they expanded jobs overseas to better serve their customer base overseas. That's not quite true. They outsource the manufacturing and then send those products back to America to sell and then keep the profit. Now they also sell overseas. I don't have, I don't have any problem with taking American goods made in America and, sending them, and selling them overseas. You obviously have to have some sort of presence there in the other country if you're going to sell products to that other country. And sometimes it makes more sense to have some manufacturing there if you're going to sell to that country. But if you're only having manufacturing in other countries to bring some of that stuff back to sell it to America, well, that's not going to benefit America now, is it? No. And why do they do that? It's because overseas labor is cheaper. Remember, they have, chance, uh, they, they have uh, factories in China and Vietnam. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait. China and Vietnam, what do they have in common? Oh, right, they're communist countries. That's right. Well, I thought they weren't big hits with socialists, but I suppose communists are different. Since they, you know, their labor, the people, the workers get paid pennies a day in those countries. So I guess they don't have a problem with communists. But here's a real problem with GE. He says, quote, U.S. companies continue to wrestle with an outdated and complex tax code that puts them at a distinct competitive disadvantage. And here we go. Complaining, bitching about taxes and regulations. Of course. And yet somehow, with, even with all these challenges, somehow you manage to make billions and billions of dollars. And your company's incredibly successful. Gee, I don't understand how that happened. If it's so burdensome to do uh, business in the United States, then why are you doing business in the United States? Why not reincorporate in Somalia where they have no regulations whatsoever? Oh, because you're not going to get rich in Somalia. Because you have no customers there. But apparently, too burdensome of regulations and taxes to do business here, even though you're most successful when you do business here. Amazing. And see, here's the other thing. Immelt himself has made $26 million in executive compensation just for 2015. He's done pretty well for himself. And that has actually gone up in the last few years. Weird, I thought he had a competitive disadvantage, but apparently he seems to be doing very, very well for himself. Funny that. Now, on the issue of taxes, Immelt writes, Sanders has stated many times that GE pays no taxes. Repeating a lie over and over does not make it true. We pay billions in taxes, including federal, state, and local taxes. The U.S. tax system has not been updated in 30 years and isn't designed for today's economy, which is why we support comprehensive tax reform, even if it raises our rate. And yet I wouldn't be surprised to see you lobbying for politicians that are okay with keeping your taxes low. You supported President Obama in 2008, 2012. Turns out Obama kept 97% of Bush's tax cuts. Hmm. Comprehensive tax reform. Interesting. And look, Here's how much he got back in taxes. In 2010, GE received $3.3 billion in federal refunds. That's the government giving them a refund on taxes. They got money instead of paying it in, despite having more than $5 billion in profits that year. And that's while all while paying Immelt $15.2 million in executive compensation. Oh, we pay our taxes. And you know what? The tax system is so outdated, so terrible that we had to get $3.3 billion in refunds from the federal government coming from, going from your pockets right into ours. Where do you think that money comes from? That comes from actual working taxpayers. 
Who's a welfare queen in this situation? Hmm, I wonder. And not only that, in 2015, GE had 100, held $120 billion stashed over in overseas tax havens. You want to bet that GE shows up in the Panama Papers? I'd be really, really surprised if they didn't. We'll just have to see when those revelations come to light. Just how much and how many shell companies GE might have set up in order to hide their money from Uncle Sam. Now, finally, there's another uh, thing that I want to get back to. I'm gonna, I want to get back to the whole socialism thing. Now, I seem to remember GE benefiting from a socialist bailout back in 2008. They received $139 billion of our tax dollars. I thought you were a capitalist, Jeffrey Immel. I thought you were a capitalist. Isn't capitalism where you allow businesses that are doing terribly to fail, like yours? Your business failed. It would have collapsed without our help. I thought you were a capitalist, not a socialist. I thought you weren't a big hit with the socialists. Oh, but I guess, just like doing business in China and Vietnam, you're okay with communism. Or maybe you just believe in capitalism until you need the people to prop up your failing business with taxpayer-funded bailouts. Maybe that's it. Now... Finally, he says, and this goes along with the uh, new Clinton strategy of trying to disqualify Bernie Sanders, quote, it's easy to make hollow campaign promises and take cheap shots in speeches and during editorial board sessions. But U.S. companies have to deliver their employees, customers, and shareholders every day. GE operates in the real world. We're in the business of finding real things or of building real things and generating real growth for a nation that needs it now more than ever. I'm proud of all that we do. And how it all figures into the moral fabric of America is so plain to me. It seems Senator Sanders is missing the point. No, no, no. It's you that missed the point. You missed the point. Think of what this guy said. It's more realistic to have policies in place that benefit people who outsource jobs or not pay their taxes or hide their money from the government and then get bailed out with the taxpayer when they fuck up. Also, you and I, uh, as giant corporations, can, can, uh, can create about 125,000 jobs. In an economy that requires millions of good paying jobs. Does that sound like a good deal? Them getting all those sweet heartbreaks and deals for 125,000 jobs. We're losing more money than we're gaining in jobs. We're getting fucked by these companies that take advantage of us. And then they lobby politicians to rig the rules in their favor. You know what's not moral? That. If you create a business, pay your taxes, create good paying jobs, and become successful, that's awesome. You're awesome. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. But if you become a vampire sucking blood and money out of the jobs and blood and money and jobs out of the U.S. and expect a refund from the federal government, well, then you are what's wrong with America.